My grandmother loved books, and she had a lot of old books. I ended up inheriting them when I was probably about 15 or 16, and I had um, in my bedroom I had this display of old books. I just liked the look of them, so that was probably the the first um, exposure I had to an old book, um, uh, though I was an avid reader. So after university, I um, I worked for I apprenticed with a few fine press uh, um, printers, and. Um, after having kind of at least gotten the hang of that, and that's all you know, the old lead type, setting the lead type and printing on the old hand presses and whatnot, um, I realized that if I was going to actually be able to make a go of this, of this industry all on my own, I'd have to bind the books myself as well. Moved out west to Victoria, and um, there was a man, I was living with somebody, working at a bed and breakfast and getting free room and board for this work, and he was a teacher, and um, at that stage, I, I started to need more money. I needed to look for a job, and he said to me, what is it that you want to do? Like, would it, would, if you could do anything, what would you do? And I said, actually, I'd really like to work in a book bindery. I think that that would really add to my skill set. And he said, well, then why aren't you doing it? Because I was applying for jobs at cafes. And he said, if you want to work in a book bindery, why are you applying for jobs in cafes? And I thought, well, that kind of makes sense. Amsterdam was my big break because you have to go to Europe in order to gain, to really hone all of these skills. It, it, you really have to be in Europe. Once I worked on a book that was um, three times the value of our apartment in Amsterdam, and <laughs> my husband went to pick the book up and drive it home, and the, the only reason we knew what it was going for was because the client said, oh, you know, make sure you don't get into a car accident with this thing. It's worth quite a lot of money. I just had a, a book in. It was an unas unassuming as a, a as a book, other than it was a nice old book. But it happened to have the one of the very few plates that Rembrandt had etched specifically for a run of books. Because of that, because if you've got a Rembrandt anything, even though he didn't, act, he mostly did his own printing, or it was in house, right? right? But um, uh, in this particular case, somebody else obviously got his plate and printed it. Um, however, it's still there aren't all that many books uh, of, of that um, printing in existence, and it's a Rembrandt, um, and it's particularly interesting because he didn't, he did so few of these things um, that. All of the value of that book was in that one page with the etching on it, and it was a pretty, pretty high value book. In the past, the bookbinder was the book restorer. I mean, the, the person who bound the books, they would also get the books that needed to be fixed, and it was all kind of just one general trade, where now we're all very specialized. Today, I really, 99% of my work is book conservation. People always tell me, that I'm the first book restorer they've met, yeah. Um, it surprises me, you know when you get good at something, you assume that everybody's kind of on the same track as you? It surprises me how little people actually know about what I do. They, they barely know that I do more than put a binding on a book. Um, um, so the questions are limited because the knowledge is limited, to, right. li limited in order to be able to ask the questions. But yeah, I'm always the, that's the comment that I always get is, wow, you're the first person I've met who blah. I really loved fixing old books.